Now, Sharita Chuchu, author of Bible and Breakfast, talks about finding time, even in the busiest of schedules, to connect daily with Jesus. It's possible, and she'll tell you how. Next on Significant Insights. You know, if you feel like you're already behind before you get out of bed in the morning, well, that's how a lot of women feel, too. Some of the multiple jobs that women are balancing today include work, families, child and aging parent care, and even volunteer responsibilities. Trying to find time alone for rest, much less Bible study and devotions, well, it can really seem overwhelming. As Sharita Chuchu knows a lot about having a busy schedule. She's married and she's mom to three young children, and she's also a writer, a speaker, blogger, Bible teacher, and founder of One Thing Alone Ministries. Her passion is helping women find joy in Jesus through creative and consistent time in His Word. She's written the devotional Bible and Breakfast to help women develop the appetite and the habit of daily time with the Lord. TLN President Deborah Fraser had the opportunity to talk with Asherita recently about her devotional and her passion to help women grow spiritually. If you're a wife, mother, blogger, best-selling author, would you consider yourself rather busy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know of any woman that would say she's not busy. <laughs> well, that's my question. You know, this day and age, I think women are yeah. very busy. In, you know, decades ago, you were a wife and a mother. But look at all the add-ons that you have in your own household. Right, yeah, and it's not just me. I think every woman, regardless of what season of life she might be in or what commitments she has, um, there's always more demands on our time than we feel like we have time to do it all. And then there are the stresses in life um, yes. above everything else, and I'm sure that you have yours. Yeah. Yeah, but really I find just taking one day at a time and saying, okay, Lord, what do you have for me today? Um, because when we focus on what he puts in front of us to be faithful in, in what we have today, he gives us enough grace for each day and his mercies are new every morning. So I don't have to worry about tomorrow or next week or next year. I just being faithful in what he's given me today, I feel it helps remove some of that pressure and stress um, and then clinging to his power and his strength and his mercy and, and asking for forgiveness. Yes. When, you know, I think stressors sometimes we can um, get so overwhelmed that we're short with the people we love most. You're also um, a blogger, so I'm uh, assuming you hear often from other women. What kinds of um, stressors do they deal with? What, what do they share with you? Probably the biggest thing is just feeling they don't have enough time. We don't have enough time for everything we want to do. And that's everything from um, taking care of our bodies and cooking nutritious meals and working out consistently to our relationships and you know reading out loud to the kids and mm -hmm. being there for our husbands to hear about their day to reading the Bible and feeling like we don't have enough time to pray and to, to meet with the Lord the way we want to. Um, that's by far the number one biggest challenge for women today, I think, is not having time. And how about joy? Are they finding joy in their circumstances, or is that also something that's difficult for them to find? Um, I think that might vary more with each person, um, but that truly is my desire, um, is in, in the midst of the busyness and the stress, to find joy. I think sometimes it can be easy to say, someday, when everything settles down, when um, I have enough time, when the kids are gone, when I have that job where the bank account is finally full, then I will be able to enjoy my life and enjoy God's presence. And my desire truly is that we would enjoy that here and now. Well, and let me just speak for a moment about that other side, when the kids are gone and when you have the time. There are, the time is filled. There are still those stress points there, you know, so, learning when your kids are younger to come up with um, you know, a practical way of including, for instance, a biblical study or um, time for yourself, instance, quiet time. Mm -hmm. um, you feel that's very important. 
Yeah, you know, I've been blessed with um, older women in my life, and that's what they told me. They're like, Asherita, if you wait 20 years, you'll find that uh, you've wasted these 20 years. And then you get there and you're like, no, actually, I'm a lot busier than I ever was. <laughs> um, and so that, that truly was my, my prayer as a young mom was, Lord, how, how do I find joy in you here and now? And not yeah. just put it off. Um, and so for me, that's looked like inviting my children into my time in God's Word. Um, Debbie, I used to wake up earlier than the kids because that was the right way to meet with God is oh, when the house is oh, quiet yes. and everyone's asleep, right? You I do wake get up that. early. And I would get so frustrated with my kids when they would interrupt my devotions. That's my quiet time. Um, and, and in prayer with the Lord, He just so graciously brought me to this point of saying, um, I want to meet with you where you are and mm. I want you to bring your children into this. I mean, how will our children develop a hunger for God's Word if we don't model it for them, if they never see us reading God's Word? Completely and so agree. it's a lot more chaotic. <laughs> I might read the same verse out loud seven times in a row right. around our breakfast table, uh, but there has been just so much joy in reading the Bible with my children. And you're showing your children how to live their life hmm. at a time when they are the most vulnerable. You know, I think we all desire for our children to love God. And it's been interesting to read a recent survey reveal that the number one factor that is most likely to indicate whether an adult child will stay close to the Lord after they leave the home is whether they were consistently reading the Bible while they were at home. And for me growing up, my parents modeled this. Like I would come downstairs in the morning and they would be at the table um, or in wherever they are. Like I have these pictures of seeing my mom at the breakfast table reading the Bible and seeing that that was for her, her sustenance. It was the bread of life. She was hungering for that. And seeing that modeled is, is part of what stirred that hunger in me too. And so I want that for my children, not just to tell them it's important to read your Bible, but to model for them, let's do this together. Let's sit around the table. Um, what do we learn about Jesus yeah. in this passage? So that it's not just accumulating head knowledge, not just information, but it leads us to adoration. And that's yeah. where life transformation happens, is when our hearts grow in our affection for Jesus Christ, when we see Him on the page, He becomes more precious to us. And our children see that. Yeah. And that is what will will glue their souls to Jesus Christ, is when they own that for themselves too. You decided to do a blog. Now, I do want to discuss this with you because a mom of three, how in the world did you find time to start a blog? And it's such a great story because <laughs> I always wanted to be a writer. And um, other people encouraged me after I had graduated, got a job, got married. Um, I was pregnant with my first child. And I was thinking, okay, I'm going to start a blog. And I was on maternity leave. And that's when I started my blog because I thought, I'm going to have all this time. I'm going to be home from work. I'll have nothing to do all day. <laughs> I'm going to start a blog. And it, it's hilarious looking back because it probably was the worst time to start a blog. But um, in God's goodness, he used that. Again, the, the faithfulness of just one day at a time. Right, right. Um, and truly writing from my own pain point of, I am overwhelmed, I am busy, and yet I have a love for God's Word. So how, how do we nourish our souls? Women started saying, me too. Like, I, I'm there, I need that, I want that. Uh, so it really has been a joy to find this community of women who truly love Jesus and are all about creative and fun ways to dig into His Word every day. How did you start the Bible Challenge? Is this part of that? It is, it is. And I had heard of this Chinese pastor that said, um, no Bible, no breakfast. That was his commitment, that he would not feed his growling stomach until he had first fed his soul. And I really admired his, uh, just the way he prioritized that. But as a young mom, I realized it would probably be 5 p.m. before I ate, right? <laughs> that was just not realistic for me. Right. But I thought, what if instead of no Bible, no breakfast, I did Bible and breakfast? And I paired them together. And um, I invited my blog readers to join me. Let's do this for 31 days. Let's read the Bible while we eat breakfast. And um, that first year, we had over 1,000 women 
wow. sign up and say, I want this. I need this. Um, and so it's been such a joy to journey with women through that to help them develop habits, creative habits of being in the Word, um, and then to bring it into book form so that anyone can do it any time of the year, not just when we're in the midst of a and challenge. And that's what I have here. So that um, challenge to women mm -hmm. turned into this beautiful book, Bible and Breakfast. Coming up, Asherita talks more about her unique devotional cookbook, Bible and Breakfast, and it will really whet your appetite for Bible study. We'll be right back. It's so easy with social media to fix our eyes on people. And like you said, those who have the illusion of perfection, that they have the perfect life or the perfect marriage or the perfect kids or the perfect ministry or whatever it is. Uh, and there's discontentment sown into our souls. And I keep coming back to the same answer and I probably sound like a broken record, but it's that we would fix our eyes on Jesus. Welcome back. Today, Deborah Fraser is talking with author Asherita Chuchu about the importance of consistently reading God's Word. She's designed a devotional combined with breakfast recipes as a way to join breakfast and the Bible in a manageable kind of a way. In fact, Bible and Breakfast is its title, and they talk more about that in part two of today's discussion. My heart really is this habit formation. How do we develop this consistency in being in Good God's habits. Word. Because we are going to develop a habit. Yes. Yeah. But then it was so much fun to bring in some of my favorite breakfast recipes and say, you know, sometimes you get stuck in a rut when it comes to eating breakfast. So um, I share 31 of my favorite well, breakfast recipes that are second. wholesome and my kids love them and we're in the kitchen together. Um, and I just love how beautiful of a book it turned out. I couldn't be more pleased. Well, and I love the positive way. I mean, it's, let's get started. I mean, so open right there. Do you feel like you're running on empty? Yes. Like you want to read the Bible, but you just don't have time. I remember those days when my kids were young and um, I had no control over my day. Um, and, you know, you've come up with a way um, that women really can interact with their kids and get back their time. Um, I move on to this other page here. If you haven't yet experienced the sweetness of God's Word, well, friend, you are in for a treat. Mm. Today the Lord is inviting you to taste His goodness and delight with Him. And then, now this is just after you have shown a scrumptious recipe that um, I'm dying to try. <laughs> and then you t tell me, I, I'm assuming while it's cooking, well, it's cooking in the oven. Some of these are not. There's another recipe in the back that I am going to try that I realize you don't have to cook. Yeah. This is very quick and easy to do. A marathon chocolate energy bite. Yeah. I can't wait to do that. So there's two parts to that. Um, the food recipes on the one part, I chose um, not only to be nutritious, but also to fit into the lifestyle of, of a busy person, whether you're uh, you're cooking or your husband cook right. is cooking, whoever is doing it. So they're either um, recipes that are quick to make or those that can be made ahead of time and maybe stash them in the freezer or you meal prep. Um, a nice variety. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Then, but then the, the spiritual content of it too, like what I found is sometimes we have this formula of what we think our time in God's Word needs to look mm -hmm. like. We need to read the Bible cover to cover in a year or we need to spend 60 minutes in inductive study. And we have this all or nothing mindset. Right. If I'm not able to do that, then I'll just wait until I do. Right and that time never comes. And so there's this guilt and this shame that gets piled on top, which just drives us further away from God. But when we think of breakfast or, or whatever meal of the day, um, you know, if I don't have time for this feast of like chocolate chip pancakes and a smoothie and a rainbow fruit salad and whatever else I might want to spread for my family, when we have time to feast together, we celebrate it. It's so much fun. But when I don't have time for that, we might just grab a smoothie on the way out the door or those power bites, right? right? So when we feed our bodies, we intuitively know that snacking is better than being famished. But we have a hard time thinking that way when it comes to reading the Bible. Right. So one of the things that I was very intentional in including in this book is both a snack on the go, 
a short devotional that if you only have a few minutes, yes. you can grab that bite and a feast at the table. If you have more time, here's the spread of God's Word. You can word. see that right here. Um, you just say, open your Bible, Matthew 4, 4. So it is Jesus answered, it is written, man shouldn't live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Very simple. And then you ask us to read Psalm 34, which is one of my favorites. Mm. I will exalt the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be on my mouth. And it goes on. And you can see that, that you have one or the other or both. Mm -hmm. And imagine reading those alongside your children. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful design. I love your book. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, I can hear those verses, and on the one hand, it can feel like, oh, here's just another thing I need to do. But when you hear Jesus' invitation, it truly is a call to joy. You know, he says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened. Yes. And who wouldn't say, that's me, <laughs> that's me today, <laughs> Jesus, I am tired, I am heavy burdened. And Jesus promises, I will give you rest. That truly is what this is about. It's not about checking something off our list. It's not about impressing God with our spirituality. It's not about earning our salvation or God's approval. All of that has already been finished on Jesus' work on the cross, his resurrection from the dead. This is an invitation to live life in God's presence, a call to joy. Ashrita, you look pretty perfect. Your book <laughs> looks pretty perfect. No. There, I remember when my girls were young, there were days it was probably better I didn't speak to someone or anyone. Um, I'm sure there are women watching this today that are dealing with stresses that we have probably never seen. Mm -hmm. Living lives that are much more complicated than I can imagine. Mm -hmm. How do they get to that place that we are here? I think we get into trouble when we look at other people. It's so easy with social media to fix our eyes on people. And like you said, those who have the illusion of perfection, that they have the perfect life or the perfect marriage or the perfect kids or the perfect ministry or whatever it is. Uh, and there's discontentment sown into our souls. And I keep coming back to the same answer and I probably sound like a broken record, but it's that we would fix our eyes on Jesus, that he would become precious to us. And the only way to do that, the only resource we have been given is the Word of God. That is where we grow to know Jesus Christ. And then He has filled us with His Spirit if we belong to Him. And so it's becoming sensitive to His Spirit's work inside of us, listening when He calls, being quick to obey. And then I, the other thing as women I will say is that we would come and link arms with one another. Yeah. That instead of competing or thinking, I need to measure up to her, saying, Lord, She's carrying burdens that I have no idea are on her shoulders. So would you use me today to encourage her, to come alongside her, to help her, to cheer her on? Uh, that truly is such a joy when you cease competing and you celebrate the community that God has given you. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Debbie. You can get Bible and Breakfast through moodypublishers.com and other online retailers. Asharita returns with three tips on how to spend more time with Jesus right after the break. Instead of setting these grandiose goals that I'm going to do so much, think how small can I start with just one step? Maybe that's reading one verse, or maybe it's journaling a one-sentence prayer, or maybe it's listening to one minute of the audio Bible while you walk the dog. Start tiny, and that will help you build consistency as you stick with it. As we heard today, Asherita Chuchu has a passion to encourage others to grow spiritually by just spending consistent time in God's Word great idea. She gives three tips on how to do this in today's final thoughts. If you spent any time around church, you might feel like there are specific formulas for how to spend time 
with Jesus. It might be that you need to pray a certain way or you need to study the Bible a certain way or maybe your quiet time in God's Word has to last a certain amount of time. Or maybe you think that morning devotions are the right way to do it because that's what you've been told. But the interesting thing is when we look at the Bible, at what God says about coming to Him, there's no mention that morning devotions are better than evening devotions or even sit in the carpool line devotions. God invites us to come to Him just as we are, wherever we are. So let's think creatively about what time in God's Word might look like. Here are three steps that have helped me to develop consistency in being in God's Word every day. And step number one is start tiny. Instead of setting these grandiose goals that I'm going to do so much, think how small can I start with just one step? Maybe that's reading one verse. Or maybe it's journaling a one-sentence prayer. Or maybe it's listening to one minute of the audio Bible while you walk the dog. Start tiny, and that will help you build consistency as you stick with it. And then you can grow it over time. Step two is to link that tiny habit to something you're already doing. So you might have noticed I said uh, listening to a minute of the audio Bible while you walk the dog, because that's something that you already do. Or maybe you read that one verse of the Bible while you eat breakfast. It could be that you take a moment to pray as you're on your evening commute back home. But think of something that you are already doing every day in your life and link that tiny spiritual habit to something that's already established and you'll be more likely to stick with it in the long run. And then step three, I love this, is to celebrate your wins. You know, so often we are hard on ourselves because say we're doing a 31 day devotional and we only get through 17 days and that makes us feel like a failure. But when we allow that guilt and that shame to pile up on us, it makes us less likely to stick with a Bible habit in the long run. Instead, when we celebrate progress, even if it's just little by little, what happens in our brains is that we release this chemical that makes us want to continue to do it. It's called dopamine, and it's the way that God wired our brains to seek out habits that bring life. So whatever your tiny habit is that you've linked up to something in your life, I encourage you to celebrate the progress little by little. Praise Jesus for helping you this day do that tiny habit. Thank Him for what He's teaching you about Himself. And then maybe if you want, you have a tracker and you keep track of how consistent you are. Or maybe you reward yourself with something fun. At the end of the day, it's not about fitting into other people's formulas of what our time with Jesus looks like. It's about coming to Him. It's about finding joy in Him. And no matter what that looks like, friend, may you taste and see that the Lord is good. Wow, thank you, Asher Rita. Uh, what an incredible program. In fact, I can't imagine a more important topic than one about spending more time with the Lord and growing our spiritual lives. I uh, was thinking about this a while back, and I asked myself a rather startling question that I didn't particularly like the answer to. And that was, out of all the activities that I'm involved in in a period of seven days, how much of that time am I spending in my spiritual growth and in time with the Lord? And I was a little bit disappointed and embarrassed, quite frankly, at the answer. So I made a commitment that every morning I would spend time in the Word and then I would spend time in prayer. Because my, my relationship with Christ and my investment in that relationship is the most important thing in my entire life. And if that important, then I should spend time with it, and so should you. So I trust the program has been a blessing to you. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Significant Insights.